Ophelia's gone, but we're tracking a couple of storms out in the Atlantic. I'm meteorologist Joe Martucci. Thanks for watching this edition of Hurricane Hunt. And join with me back again from mm -hmm. his trip to Italy, Sean Sublet. Sean, I'm surprised you came back from Italy. It's such a beautiful place, isn't it? It is. You told me it would be beautiful, and you were absolutely right. The art, the food, the train travel is also most excellent, I will say. Yeah. But at a, just a blast, Florence, Rome, uh, the Amalfi Coast, Sorrento, it's just great, man. It was just That's, great. But good yes. to be back. Good to be back. Yes, absolutely. Good to be back, and I'm glad that, that you're back here as we continue to go through hurricane season with us. Let's get you into mm. our tropical notes uh, for your Wednesday here. We have Tropical Storm Philippe. Uh, expected to stay weak, actually weak in as it moves near the Caribbean islands. Then we also have another storm that's likely to form in the open Atlantic Ocean later this week to become uh, Rena. And then as we go uh, into some stats here, this is from Phil Klotzbach at Colorado State University, a great person to follow on Twitter. The seventh most days with a named storm on record here. So it has yeah. been active this season. Fortunately, we haven't had an extreme amount of landfalls in the United States, but still it has been on the more active side. So, Sean, take us into our yeah. satellite. Show us what we have going on. Yeah, so as we look into the open part of the Atlantic, the eye is kind of drawn to that big blossoming of clouds that's east to San Juan and, and Barbados. That is Tropical Storm Philippe. And then just to the east or southeast of that, you see the big L, that is going to be the next system that will ultimately become Rita. But the specs on Philippe right now, uh, the top wind speed uh, within the storm is 50 miles an hour. So that's certainly a manageable storm as it pushes off to the west, about nine miles an hour as the forward speed. And we think this is really more than anything else going to be a heavy rainmaker getting into the Caribbean Sea. So you can look at the, the satellite presentation. It's still kind of disorganized. Uh, it's going to start to move into some drier air aloft. There's still some wind shear to deal with. So we don't think this is going to be a, a calamity, if you will, for the islands of the Caribbean. But from anywhere across the Virgin Islands, very likely across Puerto Rico, this is going to be a heavy rainmaker leading into this coming weekend. So that's going to be the biggest issue we suspect there. Uh, a few inches of rain, probably, depending on how rapidly the storm pushes into the islands of the Caribbean. But after that, it probably just kind of goes away. We don't expect it to really hold together much, much farther to to the west after it goes across Puerto Rico or approaches Hispaniola. Uh, so take us, so, you know, wind shear is one of the things that's going to keep it from developing into a massive hurricane. Take us through the wind shear forecast, Joe. Yeah, and, you know, wind shear is a change of winds with height as you mm -hmm. go aloft. Hurricanes don't like wind shear. Uh, now, on a side note, severe thunderstorms do need wind mm. shear to develop. Your tornadoes or, you know, severe thunderstorm warnings that you see across, you know, on the mainland United States. But when it comes to hurricane season and hurricanes, they don't like windshield. Any tropical cyclones do not like wind shear. So as we go into the next couple of days, you're going to see with the cone there getting into some wind shear, especially as we go into Saturday, which is when it starts to just become a tropical depression, possibly even just a remnant storm. So as it enters this wind shear, it essentially rips apart the storm and weakens it, and it's running right into that region. If it stays, uh, or if the storm was to actually make a turn to the northwest, it would be in a low shear environment. It could certainly fester and develop just because our waters are still warm, right, Sean? Oh, they're so warm. And this is one thing that is oftentimes lost. You know, we're in the, the depths of September now, late into September. And of course, if you're in the east, uh, eastern U.S., it's, it's gotten cool. But it's important to remember it takes water a lot longer to respond to the seasons, if you will. So the water is warm well into October. And you can see there's plenty of water there. Uh, in the Caribbean Sea, it's certainly into the Gulf of Mexico that is that is north of 85, 86 degrees. So there is still plenty of energy out there from the ocean water heat content to spawn tropical systems and full on hurricanes well into October because we really don't see um, the se the season backing off until until the middle of October. Uh, we mentioned at the outset there there are two systems. Philippe is one. The other is probably going to become Tropical Storm Rena in the coming few days. And that's what we see in the tropical outlook. Uh, our folks at the, our friends at the National Hurricane Center, ninety percent chance of development over the next two days. 
and certainly in the next seven days. But even though the longer term outlook suggests this is probably going to stay offshore, as we always like to say, uh, until you, you can't really sound the all clear just yet. They always have to monitor these things, especially for shipping interests and wave heights and that kind of stuff. Uh, but the early money is this is probably not going to directly uh, impact the United States. But uh, yeah, the the climatology is still there with the warm waters, Joe, you, you know, as much as anybody, these storms go on well into October. Uh, yes. And Superstorm Sandy in 2012 mm -hmm. is uh, the one that you're mentioning showing here. Yes. Jersey yes. Shore. Um, so we are on the downward slope here with our climatology, but I still like to say we're in a general um, uh, active part of our hurricane season, really until you get to that, that drop off that you see around the middle of October you know, we're still very much in the thick of things with tropical cyclones. And we're seeing that because we do have Philippe and we also have what will probably become Rena. It's just that they're likely not going to impact the United States. But we still have about another three weeks or so of, you know, an active time with our hurricane season. Then it declines pretty drastically after that. We can still get something after that time, Sandy being one of them. But the chances of something happening do really decline at a good rate after about the middle part of October. So to wrap it up for your Wednesday, Tropical Storm Philippe is expected to stay weak, move near the Caribbean islands, and bring lots of rain, but that's about it. Another storm, likely Rena, is expected to form in the open Atlantic, probably by the weekend here. And remember, it has stayed on the active side this year, the seventh most days with a named storm. So that means either a tropical storm or a hurricane on record. We'll be back with you later this week with another hurricane hunt. We'll have that episode last year through the weekend. For meteorologist Sean Sublett, I'm meteorologist Joe Martucci. Thanks again for watching Hurricane Hunt.